Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life and I'm here today with a fun roundup of quilts for you. I am going to be sharing some block of the month sampler and row quilts today and I'll tell you why I love these types of patterns. I think it goes back to when I really started to grow as a quilter by taking part in a block of the month program at one of my local quilt shops and it exposed me to new blocks and new techniques. And so I've always just kind of felt ever since then that these are just the ideal quilts to make. You can make a block a week, a block a day, or work on a row at a time. There's just so many different options and they are perfect for beginner and intermediate quilters who want to learn new skills. So I've got a, a nice good stack of these types of quilts here today and some are older and some are newer. Before I do start though, I did wanna mention that instead of giving you the size as I go through and talk about each quilt, we will just have those listed in the description. So it will give the name of the quilt and then the dimensions of the quilt and then a link to the pattern if, if you wanna do that. I thought that would be a lot easier than jumbling up the video with all of those measurements and sizes. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm gonna start out first with a smaller sized row quilt that works great for a wall hanging. This is called Family Farm and it's made in our Harper's Garden collection. And I'm just gonna kinda of show you some of the rows. It features a row of houses and then flying geese. And this is just kind of a vintage star block that I love. And then we've got this flower and leaf and stem row, more patchwork, more flying geese, and some really fun Ohio stars. I love this quilt because you do get to learn a lot of different techniques and you don't have to make the rows from top to bottom. You can actually go from easiest, which would be the patchwork, to what you would might consider the hardest rows. And, uh, but it's a great way to learn new blocks and new techniques and just a really nice size quilt too that you can finish without spending too much time on it. Okay, next up we have Beach House and this is another row quilt. This is in our Happy Days fabrics. And at the bottom, log cabins. I absolutely love log cabins. Simple patchwork and then e some even more simple patchwork. And then I did put a row in this quilt of English paper pieced hexagons. You could actually substitute this row if you didn't want to do the hexagons, but it, it was a really great idea, I thought, for someone to you know, make just a few blocks and be able to incorporate them into a quilt. So the flower garden row and then the little churn dashes, which I absolutely love, will give you a little bit of experience with some smaller piecing. And plus I have tips for making these blocks so that you don't have to worry about being perfect. For instance, the half square triangle portions are sized up and then trimmed down. So another fun row, and then here's the little beach cottages at the top, and then also at the top we have the star row, and also have some great tips and tricks for making these star blocks. I love using the block lock rulers for the smaller flying geese. So again, this is the Beach House row quilt, and it's with our Happy Days collection. Next up is my first row quilt, and this is actually called Favorite Things. And you might know that we ended up also naming a fabric collection Favorite Things, but this is the pattern Favorite Things. And again, at the bottom, houses. I love adding different types of houses into my quilts and another different style of log cabins, really colorful and really scrappy. And then the hearts which I love, this is a bigger block. So that's the other thing about these types of quilts is that you know, you might have one row that has a lot of, bit of little tiny piecing, but then it's alternated with a row that is big, easy piecing. And then the X blocks, and then some really cute flowers with stems and leaves. And these are actually flying geese put together a little bit differently than you might see normally. This 
fabric collection, Desert Bloom, was a little bit more modern, and so I, I kind of incorporated some of the more modern aspects of this fabric collection into the rows in the quilt. And then I love these little pinwheels, and again, just a bunch of variety to get you, if you're a newer quilter, exposure to making different types of blocks. This next one is actually two quilts in one pattern. This is my Garden Stars Sampler, and it actually comes with the mini quilt, or wall hanging size, that I'm gonna show you first, and a larger lap quilt that's right underneath it that I'll be showing you next. For this quilt, I really envisioned it as a beginner-friendly project. So there are six different star blocks, and you make two of each for either the small quilt or the large quilt, and I really just, Envision this as a way for someone to practice new skills with a simple but fun project. The fabrics in both of these quilts are from our Walkabout collection. And again, six different stars, you make two of each. And I'll show you the bigger quilt now. It's, it's absolutely the same blocks, just the bigger size. And so both both quilts are included in the pattern. And just really, this is really one of my favorite quilts. In fact, I'm getting ready to remake this in a more recent fabric collection for a beginner class that I'm going to be teaching. And we'll have more about that coming up soon as well. Okay, this next one is a block of the month. And I'm actually gonna start at the top row and slide it up. This is actually my 2021 block of the month, and I do a block of the month program each year on the blog that is free. And at the end of the year, I take the patterns down and start a new one, uh, but I do have the older patterns for sale in my shop, and you can get them PDF or paper. The paper for these patterns are a little bit pricier just because they are printed on eight and a half by 11 inch paper and they cost almost $6 to ship to you. So the PDFs are available though if you don't wanna worry about that. And again, these are sampler style quilts that are designed to teach you a variety of different skills. And I'll just kind of pull up each of the rows, we have smaller piecing and larger piecing. One of my favorite blocks in this quilt was the little house block with the four houses. I still just keep thinking I need to make a pillow out of that block or something. But just a really great way, especially if you're beginner or intermediate, to learn new skills and learn new techniques. So again, this one is the 20 21 block of the month. And it's in our Happy Days fabric. Okay, and right up next is the 2022 block of the month. This was in our Seashore Drive collection. And again, 12 blocks. All of the blocks are set inside of a churn dash border. And I use three different fabrics for my churn dash three different grays, this one with the X's and the tiny floral and the large floral, and then I just varied them throughout the quilt. And so there are four blocks with each of these fabric combinations. But I've seen a lot of really lovely versions of this quilt, and some people use 12 different fabrics for their churn dash blocks, and some people use the same fabric for all of them. It's really up to you. I'll just kind of slide this down and then I'll just bring it back up and show you all the rows. And again, this one is just brand new, available in paper version, but it's also available in PDF now. I called this the Summer Fun Block of the Month, and this one was just released initially as a pattern. It was never, it was never a program on the blog or anything, but I just released a block of the month pattern. And so there are 12 blocks in the quilt, but a couple of them you'll see are repeated. So, and again, I also used a few different hexagon blocks so that you could, you know, have fun learning that technique, but not having to make a huge quilt that might be a little bit overwhelming. But again, 
churn dash and flying geese and variations on the flying geese. I always put some star blocks, I feel like, in every single one of my quilts. I've got a group of log cabins, some houses that are a little bit different than those other houses. And you'll also see that we had the two blocks that had the one hexagon and the one block up here that had two. And then I always add some simple patchwork in too because, you know, if you've taken more time and you've worked on a block that has a lot of pieces like this four log cabin block, then you want to do something simple. So that's another thing that's great about samplers and block of the month and row quilts is that you usually get a great variety and it, they really seem to hold your interest. Okay, these last two quilts I'm going to share are actually my daughter's patterns. And this is the first row quilt that she did and it's called Land That I Love. And she designed it with our Happy Days collection, which really had those fun navies and reds that really kind of lent itself to a kind of patriotic themed quilt. And so I love that she has the stars at the top and then these are clouds with the low volume fabrics. And then she has these fun and simple flag blocks. And she also did a row of houses and a row of small stars and some log cabins. And so again, this is a really fun, it's almost a wall hanging size. Again, I'll have all of the sizes in the description below, but this is just a fun wall hanging that you could put up for the summer holidays, uh, anywhere from Memorial Day through Labor Day. And it's called Land That I Love. Okay, and last but not least, but I really wanted to share this one too. You, we have released a video on this one just recently. But I wanted to also just talk a little bit about this one myself. It's Chelsea's Summer Slice Quilt, and it is with our Strawberry Lemonade collection. And I just want to start, I'll kind of start at the top. We've got the watermelon and the stems, and there's, uh, we really had a lot of fun. We actually kind of worked together on getting these watermelon blocks done. She started working on them, and I went through all of my rulers because I was really sure that I had a ruler that would work. And come to find out, I actually didn't have a ruler that would work. But we came up with a really fun method of strip piecing them. And there is a template in the pattern that works just perfectly. And this was actually the first time that I think Chelsea had done a quilt with a template and they came out beautifully. She did a wonderful job. So, and I love, love, love these little stems. They are just super cute. Okay, the next row is, this is actually a row I had in one of my quilts too, just a fun cross, scrappy cross block. And then flying geese turned the opposite way. I thought that was a really, really fun way to turn those blocks and use them a little bit differently than we normally see them. And then the patchwork strawberry blocks, which are so, so cute. And then again, like I mentioned, you know, a couple rows of simple patchwork, which really just, uh, really just, I think just really gives the eye a resting spot in a row quilt. And then we've got the lemons and the limes and some cute, simple patchwork there. And at the very bottom is a square in the square row and really scrappy and really fun way to use your low volume prints. So as I mentioned, these are just a variety of row quilts, block of the month and samplers that can really help you as a quilter get used to different block styles and learn new things and have a lot of fun. Okay, so that's it for today's roundup of row quilts, samplers, and a couple of block of a month projects tossed in there. And remember that you can get ready. It's not too late to take part in the 2023 block of a month that I have going on now. And it's definitely not too late to get ready for next year's block of a month. I'm gonna have a lot of great information on that available very, very soon. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.